I'm going to make a short story long. A short story. A long story short, but me is a short story long, amen. But anyway, we're going to get right into the word. Um, Thursday night, I, um, I shared a message entitled, Above and Not Beneath. And there was so much in there that I decided to continue it today because it was very, very powerful, Amen. Uh, it was talking about mindsets and, it, you know, your mindset will determine your course of life. It's just the way it is. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So whatever your mindset is, let me put it this way. If you don't like the direction you're going, change your mindset. Because it doesn't matter if you try to stop or you complain or whatever. If you don't change your mindset, you're going to keep going the same way. Are, are you with me? And so um, I started thinking about how we live in a paradoxical existence, meaning that th it seems confusing. You know, the things that, that we say and go through and the things we believe and so on and so forth. The word paradox means sim simply a statement that is seemingly contradictory or opposed to common sense and yet is perhaps true. You can have two things that seem contradictory, but they both be true. Is anybody here? Yes. Meant something such as a situation that is made up of two opposite things and seem impossible, but is actually true or possible. You all stay with me. For instance, we know God's absolute sovereignty, correct? That means he is sovereign, sovereign over some things? No. Sovereign over all. That's what makes him God. Yet, we are free to choose. That's a paradox. He is sovereign. He is Lord. Yet he says, but you can choose. Come on. We are free to choose, but we're not free from the consequences of our choices. That's a paradox. I'm free to choose, but I'm really not free. Because I'm free to choose something, but then I don't like the consequences, and I want to be free to tell the consequences, get out of here. But you're not free to do that. I'm going somewhere. Amen. How about this one? You buy some beautiful roses. I mean, they are, you smell them, they're beautiful. I hope you do that, guys. If you don't do that for your wife, do it, please. It means a lot to them. However, you have to realize that on the stems of those beautiful roses, they are thorns. That's a paradox because you'll go, here, honey, and you feel <laughs> He said, oh, how thank you, how? You know, the same thing that's, that's beautiful has another side to it. And, and I don't understand it. I mean, I, you know, if, if God would take my opinion, I would give it to him. You know, Lord, why put thorns on such a beautiful rose? But we live in a life of paradox. And it's important for us to understand that. In a moment of great pain, Women give birth to a beautiful baby. Why can't they just have the baby without pain? And all the women said, amen. amen. <laughs> really? You know, why? Well, it's just the way that it is. The greatest paradox that you and I face as believers is concerning the world system versus the kingdom of God. And so on... On Thursday night, I was talking about how the Bible says that we are the head and not the tail, that we are above and not beneath. However, most people will say, I, I, I know, I hear what it's saying, but that doesn't reflect my life. Say paradox. Amen. You know, what's interesting 
hello, that you have a truth, which is basically in the world system, and then you have the truth. Now, there are both truth, but one is higher than the other. So how do we deal with this paradoxical existence? We have to know which truth is higher or which truth is above the other truth. Because a truth could be just about anything. The truth is consistent, right? A truth may be what you are experiencing. The truth is what God says about what you're going through. Well, I better hurry up because you don't look like you're falling asleep. <laughs> so here we go. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. So basically this whole thing is about developing an above mentality, developing an above mentality. You can have an above mentality or a beneath mentality. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I was sharing on Thursday, and a lot of people say, you say, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing okay under the circumstances. So that means they are beneath their circumstances, right? The Bible says that we are not beneath. We are above. So anything that you perceive is over you. You have to change the way you think about it. You have to understand that you have an above mentality, not a beneath mentality. And that's, that's the paradox because most people, again, say, well, I know, I know what the Bible says. I hear what the preacher is saying. But, man, I am under so much stress. What are you doing there? If you are under stress, that means that stress is above and you are beneath. Come on, somebody. Right? If you go like, oh, man, I'm under pressure. Well, if you're under pressure, and by the way, it is your decision. So if the Bible says that we are above, that means God made up his mind that his children are above and not beneath. Come on. So if you say, man, I'm under immense pressure, well, what are you doing there? If you're under pressure, then pressure is above and you are beneath. Help me, somebody. Right? And, 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 and so, you know, what we do, man, we try to let off steam. We make decisions under pressure that then later we regret and all that kind of stuff. When we have to stop and understand that we have an above mentality. Well, yeah, uh, well, I don't know if I do. No, you do. You do. If God says you do, you do. Because remember, that's the truth. And you may be talking about a truth. So you have to put the truth above a truth. Not that easy because you're dealing with emotions and feelings and what you see and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's, it's been God's intent to always keep us above the circumstances, above situations, above pressure. Here we see the keys. He says, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell, O Hades, shall not prevail against this. So, so the devil and his authority is never greater to come against Jesus' church. I was just listening to somebody uh, earlier today, and uh, again, I rarely you know, see Christian TV, but I just happened to go by, and the guy, all he was talking about, the, the devil has a plan for your life. Well, the God does too. And because I have an above mentality, I'm going to believe the plan of God and not the plan of the devil. So they go around explaining how the devil is out to kill you and out to steal your money. Well, listen, man, I have a, an above mentality. So I believe that God has given me all things. I don't care what the plan of the devil is. Are you with me? So the gates of hell cannot, cannot, say cannot, cannot prevail against the church. Good news is that we are the church, right, collectively. 
So that means the devil cannot steal anything from you, cannot take anything from you. Why? Because Jesus built his church. Stay with me. As a matter of fact, when it says, go back, when it says that the gates of hell should not prevail, when we think about that is that we are holding the devil back. Are you here? And that is not the context in that, in that verse. What, what, what it's saying is that the devil can't hold us back. So we are pressing in and taking territory, and there's nothing that he can do. But you have to have an above mentality to do that. Otherwise, the devil will lie and try to keep you beneath and not above. Are you with me? Look at the next verse. So he says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In, in, in proper Greek context, that is saying whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is already loosed in heaven, meaning that you can you can dictate what happens in heaven. Heaven dictates what happens. Yeah. Are you following me? It, it, it's, you know, because most people say, well, if I do this, then it'll, it'll happen there. No, my friend, the only reason you can do that is because it already happened there. Are you with me? Above and not beneath. So he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. So he, what he is saying is, I'm giving you keys to do some binding. Well, what am I going to bind? Hello. First of all, what, the, what does the word bind mean? It means not, not to allow. When you don't allow something in your life, you're binding it. But so we were taught, man, again, foolish. You got to bind the devil. So but they never taught us what it meant. They just, like if you say it, the devil will be bound. I bind you, devil. What does that mean? And they base it on this. But the fact is, he's saying, whatever you don't allow, help me, on earth is already not allowed in heaven. That's authority. We're the head, not the tail. We're above, not beneath. Right? Right? It's a mentality. It's not just a thought, but it has to be a way of life. We have to look at everything from that standpoint. We are seated in heavenly places. Come on, right? We're above. We have to see everything from above. And the view is different. The perspective is different. Like you can be so overwhelmed in the city of Chicago and all you see is buildings and so on. But if you're on a plane, you see it all. You have a whole different perspective of, and, and you'll see things that you can't see while you're on, on earth. Are, are you? So it's the same thing when, when you have a mentality, an above mentality, you will see things differently. Are you still with me? So it says that you bind on earth is bound in heaven. I think I'm going to switch. And it's, uh, so here it is. What should we not allow? We should not allow negative thoughts. We should not allow poverty in our lives. We should not allow gossip and complaining. We should not allow fear to rule our lives. That's what he's saying. If you're dealing with these things, don't allow it. That's what he's saying. Why? Because it's not allowed in heaven. And what you will be doing by not allowing that is you are aligning yourself with what above and heaven is all about. Come on. You know, I always share this. I was watching football one time and uh, the old Kansas City chief and, and the guy comes and he, and he complains to the coach. And he says, that guy keeps holding me. 
and the coach gave him some deep, deep advice. He said, don't let him. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. In other words, brother, it's your choice whether you allow him, come on, to hold you or you do not let him hold you. And it's the same concept. Many people say, man, you don't know. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. And, and the Lord said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you allow on earth is already allowed in heaven. Come on. Are you with me? Whatever you don't allow is not allowed in heaven. So stop it. Right? That's, that's the kind of advice the guy, the coach gave him. Cut it out. He's holding you because you're letting him. Here's the paradox. Is that simple? Yes, it is. However, you're, you're listening to the word of God, and you're listening to a message from above, and you're trying to receive it in a place of beneath. Come on. That's the paradox. But with every paradox, you have to choose the higher truth. It is your choice. You just can't give in to it. You, you just can't say, well, it is what it is. No, it's not what it is. What it is is what he says. Come on. This is all has to do with the renewing of the mind, right? As a man thinks in his what? In his heart or in his mind, so is he. So we, we deal with that. Lord, I'm confused. I don't understand. You say I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. These are all above things. Come on, right? You can't find those beneath. No, no, if, you, if you're trying to find something above, don't start digging down. Come on, right? And so we say, you, you say all these things, but it's not my experience. Well, experience is a truth. Come on. Then there is the truth. Why is it that uh, so many Christians experience defeat over and over again? Well, I'm going to tell you. Because defeat is found beneath. And winning is found above. Your choice. It's your choice. So then here we go. Um, well, you know, yeah, I am, I am beneath. God, take me out of here. He says, if I take you out of there, you'll go right back. Ouch. But it's true. Because what has you there is a mindset. And if he takes you out and you don't change your mindset, and you don't understand that you are an above person, not a beneath. That you are the head and not the tail. Even if he takes you out, and occasionally he does, we're going to go right back. What we need to do is speak to our minds. We need to change the way we think. We need to understand and make a decision to believe the truth, the truth, the truth, and not a truth. So that's why people say things like, you know, you tell them about the word and say, well, the reality is, right, that reality is a truth. And it's that reality that has you beneath and not above. The real reality, the reality, is the reality of the kingdom and what God says, but it's still our choice. What am I going to believe? Remember when, when Elijah, such a powerful prophet, I mean, he, he confronted Baal, he confronted King Ahab and, and all this kind of stuff. And at, at one point, uh, 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 you know, they, they threatened to kill him. And, 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 but be, prior to that, he, he, he calls all the prophets to come. It's going to be a showdown. And, and basically, he told them, you know, bring all the prophets of Baal and Asherah and so on. And then all the people came to see the great showdown. And he spoke to the people, and these were his words. If God is God, no, come on, serve him. If Baal is God, 
serve him. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Well, of course, we know that God is God, but he can't be God in your life if you don't choose him to be. That's basically what he was saying. Baal is a God, and then you got Jehovah, the God, but it's still your choice. What I'm trying to say this morning, my friend, is that we hold the keys of the kingdom. But unless you use them, they are useless. The keys of the kingdom, and he tells us with those keys, you can, whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. So understand what is in heaven. And we know it because the Bible tells us Christianity is not just about going to church. And maybe reading a, a, a devotional every now and then, my friend, Christianity is about transformation. And transformation only comes one way, the Bible says, by the renewing of the mind. And that's the paradox. We come to church and we read the Bible and we know what it says, but we don't see the change. And we rather give in to a reality than to the truth. Hello? Yes, because it is easier to conform than to transform. It's easier to conform. Does anybody hear me? Conforming is saying, well, I go to church every Sunday. But if nothing changes in your life, you're just conforming. And the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world system. I hate to say it, but the world system has gotten into the church in such a way that people think they're being transformed, but they're just conforming to the world system. We listen to what the world says to find out what we should do. There are people that are seeking the wisdom of the world to prosper. You're not hearing me. Come on now. And, and when you conform, this is what happens. If you conform, that means you will conform again because we conform to whatever is available at the time or whatever makes more sense. But this is not about conforming. He said, do not conform to this world, but be ye transform, metamorpho, metamorphosize, become a whole different person that doesn't happen physically. It happens here. Because the power, the power that you hold in walking in the direction that God wants you to walk is right here. Hey, okay. he said, I gave you the keys. What are you going to do with them? And then we go like, man, I wish my situation was like that. I, I surely can use some more money, man, I, you know, and so on and so forth. And the Lord says, you have the key. You have the key. Because this is what happens, guys. We learn to play church. This is okay because we're going to eat afterwards and then you'll feel better. Really, we learn to play church. Let me tell you how we play church. We conform. Secondly, we get so uh, enamored with the gifts that we think that church is all about the gifts. You know, and so if you have a gift and you're flowing in your gift, whatever it may be, you think you are fulfilling your place in the church. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's not, it's not about playing church, my friend. It's about transforming. It's not about uh, 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 changing your behavior. It's about transformation. And if that's not our goal, it will, will always be in that paradox. It's, it, it, it's, it's, uh, uh, you can be in that place, but you know your place. 
because you see what, what the world is saying and you see what's happening and all that crazy stuff, but yet your mind says, baloney, I trust the Lord. I know what he says. I have faith in him. He says I'm free. He says I'm a conqueror. He says I'm more than an overcomer. He says I'm healed. He says that, yes. Here's the paradox. You got the doctor, the expert. Come on. He's saying one thing, and he's talking about healing, but in a different sense. And then we have Jehovah Rapha, the healer. And he's also talking about healing. So you have two truths, but one that is higher. Amen. And so does that mean that you don't listen to the doctor? I'm not saying that. Don't sue me. This is on video. What I'm saying is that even if you go to the doctor, make sure that your faith is more in him above than he on the earth. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying because the minute you make you, your faith in the doctor, then you, because you can't serve two masters. Once you make the doctor your focus and you put your faith in the doctor, that's it. He will control your life. As long as you have faith in him, right, in him, then you are open to his leading. And you're open for the Holy Spirit to fulfill the truth in your life. Tricky. Hello? So then he says, whatever you loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. Come on. To loose means to release. It is the same word that is used when Jesus sends the disciples to find a cult. And he said, you will find it. And he said, loose it. The same word, release it. Oh, you ain't hearing me. So that means that the keys of the kingdom, because we are above people and not beneath, gives us the authority and the right to loose the things that are rightfully ours on earth. Why? Because they're already loosed in heaven. They're already released in heaven. What do you need to release in your life? Mm. Go on and release your God-given potential. He put it in you, but you will never realize it until you release it. The beneath mentality does not allow you to release your potential. You will always live below your potential because you're beneath. But he gave you the keys to loose, to release on earth. And I love it. Because if I had to wait till I go to heaven, I don't need keys. Throw the keys away. Everything is fine there. But he says, I'm giving, I'm giving you the keys that whatever you lose on the earth is already loosed in heaven. Release your resources here on earth. Don't whine about it. Don't whine about what you don't have, my friend. Have faith and use the key to release what is rightfully yours. Release the promises of God in your life. He's giving you the key to do that, but we can't do that if we keep complaining or if we are under circumstances. It's a whole shift. It's transformation. You think differently. You see differently. And, so, and some of us, it's, it's going to make our brains hurt. Because we're so used to being beneath. And somebody says, well, how do I know, Pastor, if I'm above or if I'm beneath? Because you ever notice when they want to ask questions that they already know the answers to, they have to sound spiritual. And it's like, if you're true to yourself, listen to what you think. Pay attention to what you think, and you will know if you're above or beneath. When Jesus took the children of Israel out 
of Egypt. That's what he was trying to do. He was trying to break them from a beneath mentality. And he was saying, I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry about anything. I got it. I'm bringing you out, power, authority, and I'm taking you to a above land called the land that flows with milk and honey. Anything that's called a land that flows with milk and honey has to be above. And then he puts them through the wilderness. The idea is for them to have faith in him and not in themselves. To break a beneath mentality. So, hey, we don't have no food. We don't have no food. What are you talking about? Then lose some food. Come on. Go on and lose some food. Because I'm your God. I'm your provider. So it's already loosed in heaven. Loose it on earth. <laughs> We're going to die. Over. Beneath mentality. You would know if you have a beneath mentality when all you do is complain. Amen. <laughs> and so he was trying to break them out of it. They have no water. Go on and release the water. You mean to tell me that if God took them, listen, if, if the Lord would have taken them without no issues straight from Egypt into the promised land, or first through the wilderness, I can understand why they would complain. But he didn't do it that way. He brought them out with power and authority. He brought them out. He parted the Red Sea. My goodness, man. He parted the Red Sea. He destroyed the Egyptians. He says, I am God. Look at what I do. And I love you. I'm taking you out. I'm protecting you. So now, having experienced that, you would think that going into the wilderness, they would say, Moses, um, there's no food here. It's okay. We saw what God did. He's our God. That was a miracle. So we are going to release. We're going to loose what is rightfully ours. And speak food into existence. Oh, you're not hearing me. And they come to the water. Now we're going to die of thirst. I mean, after now he, 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 miracle upon miracle, what is the problem? The problem is the power of a beneath mentality. Hey. And I have to be honest. You can hear the best messages in the world if you just conform to what's being said and not be transformed by, why, by what's being said, let me clarify that. When you conform, you give it mental assent. Oh, yeah, man, I believe that. Yeah, sure. That's just one more thing that you, uh, out of the million things that you give mental assent to. Right? But when you're transformed by it, you grab a hold of it and you talk to the Lord about it and you tell the Lord, I trust you and you will meditate on that truth and you will make it your own. And now you start being transformed because you will find that before you will make a certain decision from mental ascent and, and, and when it didn't work, you let it go. But you will find yourself making decisions, different decisions, and even when it doesn't work, you say, no, 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 no. God's word is true. See, that's an above mentality. A beneath mentality conforms, meaning we learn to, to deal with it. Oh, my gosh. I'm just telling you. So many Christians that are confused, and, and it is a paradox. And, you know, I mean, they just like... After a while, they just go through the motions because they're smart enough not to leave God. Hello? 
But the bottom line, my friend, is that we need transformation. You know you're being transformed when you look at a circumstance that's trying to keep you beneath. And then you say, Lord, I trust you. And it doesn't change. And you are still focused on him. And you will shout out, I'm an above believer and not beneath. Now you know you're being transformed. And that's why he took them out of, out of uh, Egypt and was, wanted to take them into the promised land because he wanted them to stop that mindset of conformity. They conformed to the Egyptian ways. They conformed to being slaves. You're not hearing me. And he was saying, I'm trying to break you out of that. I want you to be transformed. And the only way to be transformed is by what you go through and holding on to the truth. Now that makes sense. Because if I ask you this morning, how many of you going through something, every hand will go up. And the hand that doesn't go up, they lied. It's true. We're all going through stuff. The issue is not us going through stuff. The issue is, what is your mentality? Do you feel that you're beneath everything you're going through? Or do you understand that you are above and not beneath? He declared it. We believe it. Hmm. Okay. Praise him, praise him. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. I covered this last on Thursday. It says, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Come on. So God put all things, not some, under the feet of who? Of Jesus. Come on. And there is impossible, my friend, to be the head if those things weren't put under your feet. You can't have it both. You are either the head or the tail. You can't be both. It's the way that it is. So he put all things on, under his feet and gave him to be the head above. Still with me? Over all things to the church who we are. Get this. We are, we are so blessed That we're the ones that are over anything that's beneath God's purpose for our lives. When people say, you know, uh, man, the devil is under our feet. Then how come you talk about him so much? Are y'all going to help me today? If he's under your feet, keep him there. Somehow or another, the minute you start thinking that you're beneath, then he starts rising up. Come on. You know, the devil's under my feet, but man, he gets out every now and then and he jacks me up and he steals my money. He messes up my marriage and then every now and then I put him back under my feet. No, my friend, he is. <laughs> it's the truth. He is under your feet. So how can you be beneath? Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample or, thread, or tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, all, all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you, say above. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's above thinking. That's an above person right there. That, uh, come on now. I've given you, if he didn't give us the authority, we couldn't do it. That's what makes us above, folks. He gave us the authority. He has given us the keys. Why are we messing with, with serpents? Why are we messing with scorpions? He said, you will trample over them. They are under your feet. And as long as you stay above, yes, they will be. But the minute you decide to have beneath thinking, then the serpents and the scorpions are all over the place. Hello. 
you know what some people say? You know, that stuff is just too much pie-in-the-sky stuff. My reality, there you go. Your reality is beneath, and you're willing to believe your reality more than what God is saying. My friend, it's all through the Bible. The issue with, with, with the Pharisees and the Sadducees was that they were, they were steeped in tradition, which is beneath that which God had, had wanted for them. And when Jesus came, they would not believe him. Because they were willing to believe the tradition. And by the way, you know, understand what a tradition is. It's a tradition is something that you believe in and continue to do. That's all. So a mindset, a beneath mindset is a traditional mindset. And they would not believe him. And he says, I'm the one that you've been teaching about. But you cannot even see me. Remember, uh, uh, well, some of you will remember on Thursday I shared the scripture in, uh, in John where Jesus says, you are from beneath, but I am from above. Come on. He said, that's why y'all can get it. Because you are trying to understand someone that's above with a beneath mentality. And you can't. He was trying to bring them up, just like he's trying to bring us up. But you can fight it because you choose to believe what you've been going through all along. Amen. Praise him, praise him. So he gives us power, he gives us authority, he gives us the keys, he gives us his word, the sword of the spirit. He gives us the kingdom, he gives us everything. And he says, now watch, this is the paradox. You live in a world system that says totally the opposite than what I'm saying. That is a truth, but I'm giving you the truth and I'm giving you everything. I'm resourcing you with everything that you need. To be above and not beneath. But this is it. What do you choose? These blind guys come to him. Oh, you know, can you restore our sight? What does he say? Well, be it unto you according to your faith. Don't put this on me. I know who I am. I know why I came. It's no problem for me to give, give but what, what is your faith saying? Be it unto you according to your faith. And this is the problem, my friend, a lot of times. It's not what God says. It's not, you know, so where is God in all this mess and so on and so forth. It's not about that. He is saying, I'll do, I'll do what I need to do according to your faith. In fact, I already I have already done it on Calvary. I've already finished the work, and now you have to believe it. So the minute you believe it, it is released. Come on. I get it, man. I so happen to live in this same world and deal with the same things you deal with. And there's times when we're weak, and there's times that we get wrapped up, and, and, and I was saying on Thursday, you know, you allow your mind to take you places you shouldn't go. Why? Because we think that we don't have authority over our minds. But remember, it's here that you are either above or beneath. It's not the circumstances. And if you do not take the authority of choosing what you believe, your mind will dictate to you what you should believe and not believe. What is true and not true. Y'all hear? And I hear people say, you know, I can't help what I believe. Oh, slow down, man. Calm down. It's good news here. Because you actually can. You just don't know that you can. Because you've allowed your mind to take you 
and, and to run your life for so long that you are now a reactive thinker. Remember I shared that? You are now a reactive thinker. That means that your thinking is based on or, or, or is initiated every time something happens. Prior to that, you're not thinking. You're Hello? Yeah. And so if you're a reactive thinking, you are a beneath believer. Because that means that what runs your life is your circumstances, not you. Come on. Right? So we, he has given us the authority to think. Think on these things. If it were not so, he wouldn't say it. If he says... If, he, if Paul says to the, to the Philippian church, think on these things, that means they can. They just don't know that they could. It's easier, my friend, to conform. To conform means you go with the flow. Transformation means you go against the flow. And because, it, it, you know, we always seek the what? The road of least resistance is part of our own nature. What I just said there is beneath thinking. Nobody wants to fight anymore. Nobody wants to say, I don't care if the flow is going this way. I'm going to go against the flow because it's the truth of the word of God. Nobody wants to do that no more. Every, you know, I hear people saying, you know, well, everybody is doing it. Come on. So if, if, if everybody is doing it, that means you should do it. You are a conformist. But God has called us to what? Transform. And it happens in the church. In the church, we have these things, fads that come around. Should I go there? <laughs> it, it's true. And people want to get in the fads, whatever's going on. As if the fad is higher than God's word. I've been a nonconformist when I was on drugs in New York City. That's right. They called it rebellion. I just didn't want, well, you know what? Call it whatever you want. You know what I say? Rebel against the world system. Rebel against Satan, rebel against the serpents and the scorpions, and transform to who he, who he has called you to be. What we need is some rebels today. We, we don't need people that just go with the flow. We don't need that, my friend. It's why the church is, is in such a mess. That's why many people don't take the church seriously and their relationship with God seriously. Because they just conform. Help me, Jesus. Last verse. Romans 16, verse 20. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So here it is. Most of you got stuck on the word shortly. <laughs> Amen. Well, you see, he hasn't done it yet. Well, listen, you know that scripture will prove scripture. If that was not true, then you have to throw out all the scriptures that, that say, for instance, in Colossians, that he made an open spectacle, disarmed them, and made an open spectacle of the enemy. And then the one that says that he literally destroyed the enemy. Oh, wait a minute. So, paradox but paradox depends on how you see it or your thinking. Well, wait a minute. So if he did that, why is he saying shortly? Because you have to understand the word. And to understand the word, scripture will help you. So I study the word. And, and what I do is when I see a word that kind of contradicts everything else I read, I go back to the word. That's what you got to do. And I find every place where that word is, is, is shown. 
I find every scripture and then I read it in the context of every scripture. And when you look in the book of Acts in different places, in about four different places, it uses that word. Number one, it uses it to say quickly. Number two, in the Greek, it says that to be ready. Watch it. So Paul says, go quickly. Okay, so go shortly. No, go quickly. Move. It's happening. Right? So in context, what he's saying, and the God of peace will crush Satan under his feet, not shortly, but when you are ready. Be ready. Be ready for it to happen. Why? Listen to me very carefully. Because when it says under your feet, in Ephesians it says it already happened under the feet of Christ. And he is the head where the body, guess where his feet are in this body. Hello. Satan has nothing on us, my friend. Close that chapter. Close it. Is he still around? Yes. Can I tell you why we experience what we experience? Because we are still under a fallen earth. Come on. And so stuff happens. And every time stuff happens, we go like to Satan. Say, yeah, he, he, he's the one that initiated the whole thing in the Garden of Eden. But you think he's still around trying to steal your money? Come on. This is the, the, the after effects of what he did. He is destroyed. He has no power. He has no authority. But we still see stuff that he initiated. Stop invoking his name. Stop saying that he's like as great as God. No, my friend, he is beneath our feet. We are above believers. Are you with me? So now when you understand that, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You're only going to speak what's in abundance in your heart. And mind and heart are interchangeable in the Bible. So whatever you meditate on, that's what you're going to speak. You can tell somebody that worries all the time because every time you talk to them, they speak worry. I'm ending. Amen. You know somebody that, that, that deals with unbelief because every time you talk to them, they speak what? Unbelief. Come on. Y'all need to help me. And nobody can judge you better than you can judge yourself. That's what the Bible says. So you know what that means? Don't listen to anybody. Listen to yourself. And if you're honest with yourself, you will know where you stand. Hey, we can't keep saying, I didn't mean that. Well, if you didn't mean it, how come you keep saying it? You've been telling me that you don't mean it for 10 years. <laughs> well, maybe not 10 years. But even one day is too long. Are you all here? No, 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 no. Change the way you think. You'll change what you say. And what you say is creative. It will produce that which is coming from above and not beneath. Key. Key. The only way you can do that is to humble yourself. Because when you think you know what you know based on your experience and circumstances, that's all you're going to speak and you don't realize you're making things worse. You have to humble yourself. You have to say, I know nothing. I don't know anything, Lord. I need for you to fill my heart and my mind with truth. I'm going to study truth. I'm going to speak truth. I'm going to believe you, Lord. I'm going to trust you. 
And when you trust the Lord, my friend, that's when you humble yourself. And when the Bible says that when you are, what? Down, he will lift you up. It's the only way above. It's the only way. So, I want to pray. The challenge is out. There's nothing I can say. I said before, my job is just to sow. The sower comes to sow. I wish I was able to do more than that, but that's all I can do. And I have to live this life just like you do. I have to sow it, then I have to live it. We all do. It's not easy. But I always say that God gives, gave us help. It's the helper, the Holy Spirit. And he will help you right now if you choose to humble yourself. It's always a choice. If you choose to stay beneath, you'll stay beneath no matter what. If you choose to go above, you have the right. He already provided that. We must have an above mentality. If you want to write things down that you perceive are things beneath, write them down. And then declare in the name of Jesus, I am no longer beneath these things, but I am above these things. Would you stand with me? Hallelujah. And I wonder why the Lord would lead us this way. Maybe it's because you've been praying for something that has not come to pass. And he's letting you know you can't have an answer from above if you choose to be beneath. It's the Lord's doing. I'm not this smart guys. I'm only going to share what I sense the Lord is telling me to share and sometimes it's difficult. There's people sometimes that get upset because they feel I'm getting into their grill, you know, getting all up in their soup. I don't know your soup. <laughs> I'm just sharing what the Lord wants. Respond to him because he's about to release some things in your life that you've been praying for for years. And I want you to know what I'm saying right now is prophetic. There's things that you've been believing God and some of you already stopped believing because it hasn't happened. And the Lord says, don't stop believing. Understand with wisdom what the real problem is. The problem is not that I don't want to give it to you. The problem is that you don't allow me to get it to you because of your unbelief. Raise your hands. Come on. Father, I thank you for who you are, for your word, your love, and your grace toward us. You've given us everything. You gave your life on the cross for us. You've given us everything, Lord. You've given us everything. And now, Father, you're helping us to understand that there are some things that we need to bind and some things that we need to loose. You have given us the keys. Once you, once you gave us the keys, it is our responsibility to use them. And so, Father, I pray for a breakthrough in our thinking. Breakthrough, Father, in our mentality. Breakthrough, Father, in a negative mindset. Father, that we would choose, it's up to us, that we would choose, that we would choose to humble ourselves and to trust and believe you. That we would choose to be above believers and not beneath is what you said, is your promise. And now we attach our faith to your word. And so, Lord, everything that is ours in the above realm, even though we are on this earth, we claim it right now with our faith we say that the finances and the healing and and the breakthroughs and in mindsets and and everything father that has come against us we say now in the name of jesus those things are not allowed above 
They're not from above. They're not heavenly. They're from beneath. And Father, we choose today to go higher and to believe you. We declare in the name of Jesus that we will never be beneath again. The only thing, Father, that we have beneath us is Satan and his demonic forces. But we are sons and daughters of the living God. It doesn't matter what we've done. We are your righteousness in Christ Jesus. Father, we are the ones that you raised up. We're the ones that you died for. And we rose up with you. We are resurrected believers. And now we choose to stop conforming and be transformed by faith in your word. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord, for your people. I thank you. I thank you for RLC. I thank you for those that come to receive your word. And I know there's many, many more that need to come and to be set free. Give us the words and the grace to reach others, to reach our neighbors, to reach our friends for the sake of your gospel. Now, Father, I pray for our time of fellowship. I pray for the food that's been bugging me since I got up. And I ask that you would bless it and bless our time together. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless.